I just like makeup and I also hate it at the same time. All right guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. I'm Smacy, or at least that's what some people call me and therefore that's what I decided to name my YouTube channel. But you know, anyway, we're here and I'm doing another roast. This is gonna be a roast to the new year instead of like a toast to the new year. How many of y'all got that pun? I don't know, I'm pretty, yeah, I get it. If you've never seen one of my roasts, this is basically my version of an anti-haul. Yes, I've done anti-hauls in the past, but I started to see them as being a little bit pointless considering I don't really do hauls and considering, I mean, they're just excuses to talk shit about makeup. Like that's literally all they are for me because let's be real, I'm probably not gonna buy any of it anyway, not because I don't want it, but because I don't have the money for it. So I decided to start doing roasts so that I can roast makeup whether I like it or not. I mean, I can roast my own makeup. It doesn't fucking matter. That's the whole point of a roast. You can love something and still roast it, okay? Except in the case of that Donald Trump roast. Um, yeah, anyway, um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, get started. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through Trend Mood's website. Website, I'm gonna go through Trend Mood's Instagram. Bye bye money. My God, Trend Mood, please, enough with the annoying captions. I am so over it. It drives everybody crazy. And let's be real, the only reason anybody follows you is to catch new makeup releases. Everybody hates your captions. Not a single person on this planet likes them or enjoys them or doesn't cringe when they read them. So let's, come on, you've established a base. You've got a million followers or some shit. Stop with the freaking captions. And maybe if you didn't have those stupid fucking captions, you wouldn't have to private your Instagram every now and then because you'd have more organic followers, okay? So that was my roast of trend mood. Now let's go ahead and capitalize off of her Instagram page, shall we? Some things I have a hard time roasting, but you know what, I'm gonna do it anyway. Let's start with the ColourPop Velvet Blur Luxe Lip. Now, I'm interested in these. I think they're beautiful, but I'm gonna roast them because they ripped off MAC. What are MACs called? Like the Powder Velvet or something like that, or Power Matte Velvet Lipstick Blur Powder. Powder kiss, there it is. Now I think that that's what these are attempting to do. But that's cool because I think it's good that we have a uh, cruelty free option in the Power Matte Velvet Blur Powder Lipstick Kiss Velvet Blur Luxe game. And I'm sure that other brands are gonna follow along with this trend, which I'm totally cool with. Like I said, I never really grew out of the matte lip. I know a lot of people just kind of like got sick of it and they're like, back to the old days and let's use cream lipsticks and lip glosses and all that nostalgic stuff that makes our lips look fuller instead of wrinkly. But I just never got over the matte lips, but I can totally understand why a lot of people like the lip gloss bullet lipstick thing, which is why this seems to be like a very happy marriage of the two worlds, like something that's comfortable in bullet form, therefore easier to apply, particularly for people who are not liquid lipstick enthusiasts. And just, I don't know, I'm excited about these, but let's call it like it is. Uh, they copied off Mac, all right? Which brings me to another release that I wanted to roast so bad, but it came out after my last roast, and it was like random. And let's be real, it looked like they had a bunch of reject shades just laying around the ColourPop headquarters lab, whatever it is, wherever they keep old releases that never got... Yeah, it looked like they just had a bunch of random shit laying around and they called up Kathleen Lights and were like, hey Kathleen, you wanna put your name on this collection so we can just move this shit out of our warehouse that we just don't want here anymore? Oh, that'd be great. Okay, yeah, we'll pay you. Uh, yeah, you don't even have to hardly do it. No, just take a few pictures and do an Instagram. Yeah, it'll be easy. Yeah, we'll all make a lot of money. Oh, yep, thanks. The fucking Kathleen Lights holiday collection Let's, that everybody's already forgotten about that I'm not sure anybody bought except for like Kathleen's Loyal Minions. What was it called? I don't even know. That's how unmemorable it was because it was that effing stupid of a release. They had all these and they were like, oh shit, what are we gonna do with all these fucking pinks that we didn't release? If we put somebody's name on them, that's it. Give them some lights names. Oh, the twinkling lights eyes. <laughs> and then just 
just count the money from there, you know? I don't really buy Kathleen Light stuff anyway because, I don't know, she's not my favorite YouTuber for a few reasons, not the least of which because she handled a situation very poorly. She squandered an educational moment. She could have come out and just been very mature about it and handled the criticism, like, with grace. But instead, she decided to try to cover up the crime and it became one of those like cover up is worse than the crime kind of things because we all know that she didn't mean anything hateful by it but at the same time didn't really fully understand what she did <laughs> and recently she came out and was like how do we feel about Kat Von D beauty everybody's like are you kidding me she's allegedly an anti-semite as well as an obvious anti-vaxxer. She did come out and say that. Like, that is something we can confirm. You just want that Lolita palette, but you don't want any of your followers to, like, drag you to hell for it. Well, guess what? They will. This has turned into, like, a roast of ColourPop and Kathleen Lines. <laughs> Everybody's gonna hate me. Here we go. This one I've been kind of wanting to roast for petty reasons. I mean, this is all petty. Let's be real. Um, this is the Milani Luminoso Glow Shimmering Face Palette. Now, remember Luminati? I mean, Milani Luminoso. Remember that blush like a long time ago everybody like really loved? Yeah, for like the drugstore to have like such a really nice pigmented, for the drugstore to have such a really nice saturated blush, like that was huge because you know, it was hard to find like decent blushes at the drugstore at that time, I guess. But now of course the market's just been flooded with blush and everything that Luminoso's kind of has fallen from grace. But now they are reviving it with the Luminoso Glow Shimmering Face Palette. Okay, so here's the thing about this palette. Unless it is huge, and I think it's pretty, don't get me wrong. Unless it is really big, I don't like the idea of having to worry about where my blush is or my brush is going in there and it comes to a point in the pan which to me doesn't really seem like a very practical way to use blush. I don't know. Is it supposed to be blush? I think it is. I don't think it's supposed to be an eyeshadow palette. It just says face palette. So I guess you can use it either, any way you want. But I do not like the shapes of those pans for blush. I feel like once you hit the pan on it, it's going to be really hard to kind of get around the edges and then get the rest of the product out without repressing it. And repressing it would be a pain in the but because it very well could have the same texture as the Luminoso, which is like a baked texture, I'm not sure. But either way, I don't, I, as pretty as it is, I think that the shape is just way off, way too impractical for me. That's why, that's why I'm roasting it. Oh God, this is the best one. This is the best. This is the roast of all roasts. Of, this, is, this is the star of this entire video, and that is the Urban Decay Naked Reloaded palette. Now, some of you may know, or some of you may have heard me talk about in my last video, or one of my previous videos, how much I love Urban Decay as a brand, or how much I used to love them, and somebody were, told me that they were actually bought out by a bigger company. I don't know if it was, was it L'Oreal or something, or Estee Lauder, I can't remember. Either way, they sold out, which just answers a lot of questions that we all had, right? They fucking sold out. That's why they're not Urban Decay anymore. That's why they're like, blah, like, this is the sultry palette though ladies and gentlemen the urban decay sultry palette there it is i don't know did they like call anastasia and we're like hey let's get together and we'll make two different palettes and then they're gonna be the same i don't see how unless like somebody that they have like a mole somebody has a mole working at the other's headquarters or something and then that and that that's how we get the urban decay naked reloaded not four weeks after this sultry palette gets released. That's the only explanation I can come up with. I just can't believe they did that. It's like so shameless of them. Urban Decay, come on. I made this joke in one of the posts, either on Trend Mood or something. I was like, it almost looks like Makeup Revolution ripped off the sultry palette, and then Urban Decay ripped off Makeup Revolution's rip off of the sultry palette. Just take off the label, Liter not, like just literally take off Naked Reloaded, the writing and look at the outside of the palette and the inside of the palette. It literally looks like Makeup Revolution dupe. Does it not? What are they doing? I'm sorry, I just can't. That is the most infuriating release, I think, in the past month. This is a petty shit, I'm fully aware, okay? Here we are. 
another one of the crown, one, another one of the stars of the show right next to that Urban Decay Reloaded. This is the Morphe Foundation. Oh, Morphe. Why you gotta do this? It just looks kind of cheap. These days, anything that Morphe comes out with just looks really cheap to me. Maybe because it has the word Morphe on it. Maybe they just left their brand name off of it. I wouldn't say, oh, that's immediately cheap. It just looks cheap. A lot of it does. It just does. This freaking foundation, people are swatching it on the back of their hands and it's like staining their hands. I'm like, what the f well, it's totally normal for foundations, all full coverage ones to stain. No, it ain't. Not unless this is the first full coverage foundation that has ever been made and has set a new bar for foundations. Like, this is the new standard for full coverage. The Morphe foundation and the cheap packaging. Jouet made that foundation that was literal paint. Like, I could paint. Y'all saw me do it. I made a video of it and I reviewed it and it looked like I was painting my face. It was so full coverage. I mean, it literally looks like, like painting my face and it didn't stain. I have no idea what Morphe is talking about. I'm not sure they know what they're talking about, but at this point I'm convinced that every makeup brand is just headed up by a bunch of dumbasses anyway. And Morphe is no exception to that because these people will fucking buy it because it's Morphe and surely Jaclyn's got our back. No hate to Jaclyn Hill. I like Jaclyn Hill, but yeah, the Morphe thing, she just needs to she needs to stop with it. She needs to rebrand herself as herself, okay? Morphe is her brand now, whether she likes it or not. She has built a career on YouTube with her own name and she's lending it to Morphe. She has gone to great lengths to defend almost any release they probably ask her to defend. And at the same time, I feel like she's selling herself short because she could have a really successful brand of her own and yet she's selling her name to a really, really shady brand. But that's just me. What do I know? I'm sitting here with like 14,000 subscribers. Not that that's not a lot. I think that's pretty cool. But I mean, I, I get that like, they're like, well, who are you to talk? She's got like millions of subscribers and you're just sitting there talking shit. Well, that's the beauty of being the small guy. You can always punch up. Physicians formula, holy shit. What is it with them and this bulky ass packaging that nobody asked for and that in fact so many people have said to quit? This reinforces my notion, the, the notion that there's like, in every makeup company and in like most companies in the world probably, there's like somebody, like whoever is the creative director, whoever is like the, the CEO, they're all sitting in a boardroom and they're just like. So I'm gonna make this bulky ass packaging full of some beautiful things that people would probably actually enjoy to use on their face. However, I'm going to put it in a thick ass cardboard box that no one can take anywhere. How's everybody feel about that? How's everybody feel about that? And everybody's like, <coughs> mm -hmm. nobody, nobody gonna say anything. Nobody gonna say anything. Okay, then yes. <coughs> They're just, it's like all these brands are just surrounding themselves with yes men who are like afraid to say, this fucking sucks. Please, please rethink this. They all want to keep their jobs. I get it. Oh, and here's a good one. Alamar Cosmetics. Okay, here's the thing. This palette is actually really pretty. I think it's unique. I think um, there's not too many shades in it to make it look cheap. I think some palettes that have too many shades in them, they just come off as immediately cheap to me because they weren't curated. Alamar Cosmetics. My issue is with their dumb ass founder or is it the owner? Whatever she is, she's a fucking idiot. And the, the thing is, I would have never heard of this brand or even given it a second thought if it didn't cause drama on Twitter and on the internet and within the beauty community where she was basically like, I think if Kat Von D doesn't want to vaccinate your kids, it's nobody's business. In other news, I'm a fucking idiot who's never done any research at all of my own. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. Why is it anybody else's business? Oh, I don't know. When I had a newborn, I was scared to death that she was gonna catch the whooping cough or measles because there was an outbreak of both of those things in my town where I live and have my life and had my kid. What if one of them was in the hospital when she was born? What if it, she contracted it? She wouldn't have lived. Like plain and simple. She, if she had gone to daycare, luckily she was not in a daycare and I stayed home with her like the first 10 weeks of her life. And even after that, she didn't have to go to a daycare because her dad and me had like alternating work schedules so that we didn't have to put her in a daycare because it scared the shit out of me. What if she'd had to go to a daycare? And I'm not sure if at the time, no, because at the time, 
the law about being vaccinated before you can go to school, private or public, was not signed into law by Jerry Brown until 2015 in California. And I believe it was the whooping cough outbreak in 2014 that started in Disneyland not long after my daughter was born. So imagine if like a newborn goes to a daycare. Newborns can't be vaccinated. So it may seem as simple as, well, as long as you vaccinate your own kids, it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, well, some of us can't put our kids in bubbles until they're four and a half and have been fully vaccinated with all their boosters. Okay, thanks. God, people are fucking stupid. And then they're selling makeup. And uh, everybody's gonna be like, well, you're just an asshole. Yeah, well, now I have a YouTube channel. So there are a lot of assholes out there. It's just not all of us actually have a YouTube channel. Like I said, beautiful palette, dumb ass owner. All right, as much as I love BH Cosmetics, Zodiac, everything, I'm gonna have to roast the Capricorn palette because, whoa, it is boring. Now, I haven't seen anybody do any like looks with it yet. So perhaps once you get it on your eyes, everything is different. But my God, it just looks so boring. Like right off the bat, if you like neutrals, okay, sure. That's your palette, you know, especially if you're a Capricorn. But I have a feeling they're going to phone in almost all of these little palettes because they have an immediate selling point right there. And that is a Zodiac sign. They know that no matter what, Every effing Capricorn is going to buy this, whether they like it or not. They're going to fucking buy it because they're a Capricorn. This Zodiac thing is freaking brilliant marketing. They know that that percentage of the makeup community, particularly the ones that get into astrology, are going to buy that. And here's how I know, because I don't even get into astrology. I don't believe it. I don't believe and come at me, bro. It's okay. Like, it's okay. It's okay for me to think this way. It's okay for you to think a different way. I don't believe that astrology has anything to do with our lives. I think if it does, I think it's pure coincidence. I think a lot of it's self-fulfilled prophecy. I think a lot of people are like, you're a Virgo, therefore you're a neat freak who is a perfectionist. Yeah, I am. But guess what? There are a ton of Virgos who are not. But then again, they're the people that are like, are you a Virgo without me ever even saying anything? And I'm like, dang. I am. How'd you know? I did used to like buy into astrology. I used to love reading horoscopes. I used to sit at Barnes and Noble. I would literally sit at Barnes and Noble and get like a Virgo book or an astrology book and I would sit there and read it for hours. Anyway, I've gone on way too long about this. You get the idea. I used to believe it. I don't believe it now. Don't hate me. Okay, please don't. I don't know all there is to know about the universe. I don't know anything there is to know about it. But there's not enough evidence. All I'm saying is there's not enough evidence for me to buy into it, the astrology thing. But I'm going somewhere with this, I promise. The reason I bring that up is because, given what you know about my stance on astrology, I will still buy the Virgo palette. And probably the Libra one too, because my daughter's a Libra. There, I said it. That's why this is such a genius marketing ploy. Because even people who do not buy into astrology, I'm assuming I'm not the only one that feels this way. Even people who don't buy into that will probably buy this because it has their star sign on there or sun sign, whatever the hell you freaking call them. I'm not saying astrology is not fun. Like I think it's fun. You know, I get into it. I think it's fun. I don't think it dictates anything about our lives or who we are. I just don't unless, and except for like in the case of like a self-fulfilling prophecy, because I think possibly because I've read so much about being a Virgo over the years that I kind of became a perfectionist because of that. I have always been the type of person that would, um, rearrange my room in the middle of the night at like three in the morning because I got bored and start purging shit. But you know, who doesn't do that? That's my bit. That's my roast of the Zodiac Capricorn palette. I don't think they put a, too much thought into the color scheme. It's beautiful. It's boring. It's gonna sell. Yeah, I think that's about as much shit as I'm gonna talk today. Um, I know people are gonna think, oh my god, it's such a negative video. She's so negative. Ah, you need to spread love and light and positivity in the world. You gotta put put into the world what you want back from it. Yeah, I get that, but at the same time, like, I feel like I need to give back to the makeup brands what I'm receiving for the from them in the form of being dumbasses on social media, you know. All right, y'all, I hope you like this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber and you want to be, please hit the subscribe button on your way out, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.